what is up coming to you live from the jungle somewhere in orange county it's another episode episode 204 of dre's geek philosophy podcast monday edition the it's two weeks till christmas or a week and a half till christmas depending on your point of view i am incredibly exhausted the world of e-commerce is overwhelmed currently by the demands of the public trying to shop when they can't physically go to stores. Mm -hmm. We, at our humble uh, video game warehouse, we are overwhelmed. I've worked every day since Black Friday, and it's been a thing. (laughs) I, I was joking with my bosses today. I think, oh, I think people were panic and drunk shopping yesterday. Because we had an, a metric ton of orders this morning. Because we're always a day behind. We're, we do yesterday's orders today. <laughs> and it, it has been wild and crazy. If you've been following my Instagram, I've been posting up pictures of some of the odd games we've been selling. Uh, if you saw yesterday, uh, Barbie's Dream House for the Nintendo Wii U. That was one. <laughs> huh? You think, you think I can talk a little bit louder? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm whispering because... Tiger is asleep, and I do not want to wake him up with daddy's uh, boisterous boisterous tones. I'm trying to remain calm, as calm as, you know, I can remain. The dulcet tones of daddy. (laughs) So, there's a cooking podcast podcast going on, (laughs) on my left, on your right. (laughs) It's okay, we gotta make dinner at some point. It's dinner time podcast, We we gotta cook at some point. But, yeah, it, it's been a week. If you're a nerd, it's been a very crazy week. Because um, last week, we, uh, it was funny, there, there was the, the Game Awards happened last week, and that's usually a bunch of big announcements happen during that, that, that Jeff Keighley produced video game Oscars, or however the hell they did it. I didn't watch it. I, I saw the one trailer. I guess I cared about the announced the new Smash Brothers character, uh, Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII, which I'm sure that caused... Poor Jai Polidor to, how can I, how can I put this delicately, jizz in his pants. <laughs> he shot all over. He was arcing ropes of Jai everywhere because that's like his favorite character in all of video games. And yeah, I, he, yeah, and he put something, I'm quite excited. I'm like, excited? Look at his pants. <laughs> uh, which I'm sure is what means the requisite and the Nintendo Amiibo will be coming out at some point in the next six months but, and that, that poor Jai will try to have to hunt down. He, he was asking me to, to find some Amiibos for, for my godson this Christmas. I'm like, sorry, bro, I, I don't get out anymore. <laughs> Maybe in a past rep life, I could have gone on an Amiibo journey, but I'm in a warehouse all day, <laughs> every day, sorting out thousands of games. Hundreds of copies. Uh, the, the 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 picture I'm going to take tomorrow. You guys get a sneak preview. There's a game for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One called Subnautica. This is basically a Jacques Cousteau game. You get to explore the ocean. And I was like, this isn't going to sell. Nintendo tried this a few years ago with Endless Ocean. This can't possibly sell. We have burned through 4,000 copies of this game on each, <laughs> the Xbox and the PlayStation 4. I, I, I didn't get a chance to take a copy of the 148 copies we sold today <laughs> for the PlayStation 4. The Subnautica is it's from, from Gearbox, the same people who bring us Borderlands. Apparently on the side, they make a, a, this underwater game, Subnautica, and then just recently they came out with a, a space one called Astroneer, and that one is starting to slowly ramp up. But this Subnautica game, we've gotten a, a giant pallet of 4,000. And I was like, oh, well, I don't know if these are going to move. And lo and behold, in the, in the span of the last three weeks, we've just been chopping that pallet down. Master case after master case of PlayStation 4 games. Gone. Out the door. Like, yeah, today I was like 139 or 149 today. I was like, what? Like, I didn't get a chance to take a photo of it. I'm going to have to take a photo of it tomorrow. I, I don't know if the 149 will still be there. I'm sure our, our packing team, which, which stays a little later than I do, is... is uh, cheerfully packing them away like little elves. That's what one of my coworkers always says. All the, all the extra help we get, those are our elves to help get all of Santa's presents to everybody. 
that's how I started at this uh, this place. I was an elf three years ago, just there, like shoving copies of Lego Worlds and Lego Marvel superheroes into into bubble mailers and slapping them together. And now, three years later, I, I'm a Will Ferrell. I'm, I'm I'm a six foot elf. Yes, I'm a six. But now I'm not, I'm not. Uh, no, I'm an elf of video games, yes. But now I'm, I'm, the, I'm the sales manager of our wholesale, wholesale website. But the, I haven't been able to do much of that. It's been more of like, help us on our Amazon and eBay side. I mean, Amazon and, and Wal we, we sell on Amazon and Walmart and eBay. And it's been overwhelming to say the least. Yeah, but I think one of the funnier ones, is that there's a game called Rocket League. I don't know if you, uh, how many of you are aware of it. Uh, the game became free to play like a month or two ago, and I, I, I got very concerned. I told my boss, boss, we still have thousands of copies of Rocket League, and it, it's free to play now. Uh, and no, that didn't matter. People still want, like, as I always advocate on this show, people still want physical copies, and that's been proven to me <laughs> during this holiday as we're selling out of, we, we started the holiday with like uh, 8,000 copies of Rocket League for PS4, and yeah, we're down to like 500. We're... <laughs> Rocket League is selling every day. We sell hundreds of Rocket League for the Switch, for the Xbox, for the PS4. And it's just gone, just going away. We're, Just Dance still sells. Everything sells. So like we, well, one of the managers is like, oh, we don't have any of the brand new games. We're like, it doesn't matter. We have a bunch of the older games that people want. People want to play Just Dance 2017, 2018, and 2019. It doesn't. They're still buying it on the Wii. They're buying it on the Wii U. They're buying it on the Xbox 360. They're buying it on the Xbox One. They're buying it for PS4 and PS3. They they don't care. People still have old systems and still use them. That's how our company stays in business. We specialize in old shit. I feel like people have probably brought out their systems since the pandemic. Well, yeah, I, I, that's why we we've been super busy during like the non-holiday. That's why like for us it's been the holiday the entire year. And right now it's double holiday. Now now it's double what we normally do in the holidays. It, it's just because of this whole pandemic. Yeah, people have brought out their old like because yeah, even during the the holidays in the previous years we still sold for old systems. But this year it's just like, what's going on? I I I, I had a I had to fish out 150 copies of Just Dance 18 for the Nintendo Wii. Yeah, 2018. Just Dance 2018 for the Nintendo Wii. You know, this, the console that came out when I still had hair? <laughs> Back in 2006. Although I think I had started shaking my head at that point, but <laughs> still. Hmm? You were, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Don't worry, yeah, please, please, go ahead. Don't worry about it, don't worry, yeah. But, in, in, you know, enough about the warehouse. We, 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 we talk about the warehouse all the time. Something else, was like I was saying, the, the, the Game Awards happened last week, but unfortunately for them, they got overshadowed that day. Because uh, apparently Disney had to, had to do a big investor call, and they, they announced everything that's going to be coming out for Disney Plus for the next couple years. And my God, oh, you can't see it very well. It's a list. A whole lot of shit got announced. It was it was a tidal wave. My my, my old buddy Dustin Sandoval, who's the the vice president of digital content over there at old Walt Disney Studios, he was tweeting out. Uh, he's like, and there's more, and there's more. Like, uh, I went to the, the, the Twitter thread of, of, of all this stuff, and there's like one thing after that. Right? The, the, the Disney social media team was working overtime because I, I wasn't watching the whole investor thing. I was busy pulling games out <laughs> while this investor thing was happening. And just overwhelming amount of content. So uh, I'm just going to work my way down the list here, and this will probably take about an hour. <laughs> So uh, naturally, so we'll start with the Star Wars stuff because usually that's the most divisive stuff. But I think everything that's coming on Disney Plus so far for Star Wars has been freaking golden. I mean, this whole season of The Mandalorian has just been Chef's Kiss, amazing. <laughs> even uh, as uh, as our, our good friend Ryan Tanaka, who who who's may or may not be on right now, said, "Oh, even the filler episodes are awesome." I guess this past. Friday would, would have been, uh, some people would have categorized it a filler episode. I would have called it a character building episode. It was really awesome. <laughs> and I, I think my highlight, I, mean, this is, I don't think this is a spoiler, I think my highlight of the episode was Bill Burr working in his stand-up routine for a few minutes in the middle of the show. 
I felt like we were watching some Bill Burr stand up when he was talking to Mando and the and the and the whatever the juggernaut thing they were driving, and he was just talking to him about oh yeah, well, whatever, the, the, the mask thing, whatever, yeah, whatever, he was doing like a little bit of his stand up. I felt, mm-hmm. and that's how how Bill Burr does his does his thing. So uh, naturally, uh, the Mandalorian season three was confirmed. <laughs> yeah, like they're not gonna bring that back. It's gonna it's gonna debut Christmas Day of. 2021 so a year from now we will get season three something to look forward to in in this crazy crazy world um uh, something else was confirmed uh a show ahsoka ahsoka tano she's gonna get her own show the the character that uh was the the animated character was brought to life by rosario dawson she's gonna get her own spin-off show uh I, i didn't see the timetable on that one uh, someone else I announced that there's an Obi-Wan Kenobi show which I was really excited for because I think originally the plan was they were going to do a movie but now they with this Disney Plus thing is, is it's taking off apparently they're, they're over 90 million subscribers which apparently that was their goal for year four and here at the end of year one they've hit their year four goal so needless to say this Disney Plus thing has been a success for them there's people, uh, I think that they're raising the price a dollar, but I think they were trying to justify that dollar increase with all this stuff they announced. Wait, so the subscribers are already subscribed? Yeah, I think it's going to go up a dollar a month. Losers. I know, but since what happened, hey, Netflix has raised their stuff up a couple times in the last few years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've been repeatedly re- raising their prices. Um, some of the other stuff that may not like, if you're not like a crazy hardcore Star Wars fan, Oh, well, so, oh yeah, the, I'm sorry. The, the big thing about that Obi Wan show is that oh, uh, Hayden Christensen is going to come back and play v- Darth Vader for this show. Oh. That's insane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm like, he's going to play Vader opposite to, and then Ewan McGregor is going to come back and play Obi Wan Kenobi, which to me is very awesome because I love my Jedi Jesus, my Jedi Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> he, he is he is an awesome Obi Wan. I always love Ewan McGregor. He's he's really cool. He's a, I I like him a lot too. Mm, big fish, big fish. <laughs> so some uh, there's gonna be a Lando Calrissian show. So uh, you know freaking uh, childish Cambino, Donald Glover's gonna come back and be Lando again in in, in, a, in a show for Disney Plus. If you ever watched uh, uh, Rogue One, they're gonna do a prequel based around uh, Diego Luna's character Cassian Andor, called Andor. I guess they're gonna show him being the kind of the the shady rebel having to do bad things to be a, re- a rebel. I think that was the, his whole arc throughout that whole movie, how he had to keep betraying people and killing people mm-hmm. for the in the name of the rebellion. So I guess they're going to go deeper into that. Which is real cool. I also like Diego Luna. And, hey, yay, representation. I love how many paths that could go along. Mm-hmm. Always, like, nobody ever knew, I think, how many paths that could go down. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Like, this other odd show is going to come out called Rangers of the New Republic. It's going to be set during the time of the Mandalorian. It's going to show what's going on in the in the New Republic mm-hmm. that that's been established. There's a there's going to be an animated show called The Bad Batch. If you ever watched the old uh, the Clone War shows, there's a the, the whole pack of a uh, uh, clones that are called the <laughs> they're all there's a bad batch of clones. Uh, they're getting their own show. <laughs> uh, there's a show called The Acolyte. I I, I think. I guess it's going to be set back in the Old Republic where it's going to show the origins of the Sith. And they're going to do a droid story. I'm sure that's going to be centered around 3PO and <laughs> R2-D2, I would imagine. And uh, not in the Star Wars world, but in the Lucas uh, world, uh, they announced they're going to do a Willow show. If you if you were a fan of that that movie from the 80s, Willow, starring you know Val Kilmer, and Warwick Davis, uh, they're, they're doing a Willow TV show. So that, that's everything from the Lucasfilm area. So, of course, Marvel, they announced a whole lot of stuff from Marvel. So they showed brand new trailers for shows that uh, the, the, some of the shows we already knew about. Uh, WandaVision, they showed a new trailer. They showed a new trailer for Falcon and Winter Soldier, which made me very excited. I was very happy to see that. And then the one that intrigued me the most was that they did a new trailer for Loki. And that trailer was pretty crazy because uh, it established, you know, the from, the from the scene that happened in Avengers Endgame when, when the Avengers were traveling back in time to go get the Infinity Stones and Loki got his hands on the on the Space Gem and it just left that timeline. Um, I guess there's going to be some uh, time and space ramifications. Apparently there's a, a time travel group 
or some sort of TVA, and then one of their agents is gonna be played by Owen Wilson. Wow. Oh, really? Wow. Owen Wilson? Wow. Owen Wilson's in the, in the Marvel show. It's going to be going, wow. He'll be coming <laughs> No, it's not. It's not. Well, it's, it's the Loki not. show. He, he's going to be in the Loki. He's, I think he's going to be kind of Loki's antagonist where he's going to be like, oh, like, oh, you, you shouldn't be here. You're supposed to be dead. Wow. <laughs> in this timeline, you shouldn't exist, man. <laughs> yeah, you, you get to hear him talk, and he, he, he's basically doing Owen Wilson, but he has, like, really short hair, and it looks kind of weird but hey he, he kind of looks like uh if he was michael douglas's son that's how his hair looks <laughs> in, in 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 this trailer and i guess it's, it, it's gonna be loki trying to evade the time travel police because they're trying to like no 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 you're not supposed to be alive you're messing with the time continuum you need to go back to where you were and stay on your path and go die <laughs> and so naturally i think loki's gonna be no <laughs> i will not do that um, another cool Marvel show that got announced is that there's an animated show called uh, What If. Now, if you're an old man like me, or, or an old comic book head like me, w one of the coolest comics from the, the 70s and 80s was a show called, or wasn't a show, a comic called What If. Uh, they'd always have really crazy premises. and be like, oh, what if Tony Stark was an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Or what if Rick Jones became the Hulk instead of Bruce Banner? It was always like they kind of take, they, for like one issue, they kind of take you like on a left turn. It's like, oh, <laughs> well, like it was always like a, a fun little premise every time. Like, oh, what if Wolverine didn't join the X-Men or something? It's a, they always had fun stuff like that. So they're going to be doing an animated show based around that concept where they're going to do, oh, what if um, Peggy Carter got the Captain America, got the soldier, super soldier serum instead of Steve Rogers? And she became, you know, yeah. Captain Britain or, or whatever. They're gonna do that. That that was one of the the premises that they, they showed, right. in this trailer. Like what if? Like what? Yeah, what if? That, that's what the show's called. What if? Yeah. Yeah. It, so it, it's it's an animated show, and they're gonna get the actual vo the, the actual voice actors. Like, well, the voice actors are gonna be the actual actors. So like, oh, if there's something with, you know, Black Widow, they're gonna have scar joe they're gonna mm -hmm. have something in captain america to have chris evans that that's what the the premise i saw mm -hmm. like where they they have the the mcu voices they were not just gonna have sound alikes they're gonna bring in yeah, sound yeah. alikes they're gonna bring the actual yeah. actors and actresses to portray themselves mm -hmm. on the show so another cool one uh, well for me personally this, this is one is, they're doing a hawkeye show just based on him, because, you know, I, I always joked that he was never going to get his own movie. Mm -hmm. The closest he was ever going to get his own movie is that second Avengers movie, the Avengers Age of Ultron, because uh, Joss Whedon kind of based everything about him being, like, kind of the heart of the team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, he saved everybody from the Scarlet Witch, and they all went to his farm, and he was doing everything for his family, and they made it seem like Hawkeye mm -hmm. was going to die at the end of the movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, that's the closest we're going to get to a Hawkeye movie, but we're going to get a Hawkeye show. And... What's really cool about it is um, there was this Hawkeye comic book series from a few years ago. This awesome writer, Matt Fraction, wrote it. And it was just like, the whole book was like, what does Hawkeye do when he's not an Avenger? Right. Was like, that was the whole premise of the, of the yeah. comic book. And it looks like that's what this show is going to be. Oh. <laughs> he's a family man? Basically. Yeah, kind of like a family. Well, in the comic book, he's not a family man. But I think they're going to work, mm -hmm. I mean, they're going to work around the whole MCU one. Because mm -hmm. they're bringing in characters from that comic book. Mm -hmm. There's a second Hawkeye, because mm -hmm. at some point in the comic book, Hawkeye had died. Right, yeah. And then uh, this other girl, Kate Spencer, had, had picked up the mantle of Hawkeye, and mm -hmm. she was really good with the bow and arrow. So they have Kate Spencer showing up. It's gonna, She's going to be played by Haley Stansfield. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pitch Perfect 2, mm -hmm. Edge of 17. She's been in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, true, she was in True Grit. The, mm -hmm. She was the little girl in True Grit from a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And a uh, and, uh, really deep cut. Uh, Pete Molini sent me a, a picture. Uh, one of the one of the funny little things in that comic book was there was a dog called Pizza Dog, <laughs> mm -hmm. or this dog that just kept following Hawkeye around, and he just took him home and he just feeds him pizza. Yeah. <laughs> and so in one of the one of the live action one of the stills from the show, you see Jeremy Renner, you see uh, Haley Stansfield, and you see one of them walking the walking a dog that looks very much like Pizza Dog. Pizza dog. <laughs> and I was just like, yes, <laughs> for the uh, oh Kate Bishop, thank you, not Kate Spencer. Kate Spencer, someone else. Thank you, Warren. Kate Bishop, my bad. Kate Spencer is another character from something else, I think. <laughs> Clearly, my brain doesn't work. I am not functioning right now uh, at, at, at full capacity. My boss and I keep joking about how we're both mentally, like, drained right now because of the holidays. <sighs> now that Kate Spencer some other, like, comic book character or something else. I don't know. Kate Bishop. Thank you, Warren. 
But you know, I, I'm actually like of, of all the shows, I, I think I was like super excited about this because it's like, oh, it, it's following along one of my favorite series from a few years ago. Um, another show that got announced that uh, that that very much surprised me, although I think it had been announced, but it was confirmed. Uh, there's a Ms. Marvel show. Now this is based on the Pakistani young lady. <laughs> Kamala Khan, who is the current Ms. Marvel, because before it was, you know, Captain Marvel. Carol Danvers was Ms. Marvel, and then she eventually became Captain Marvel in the comic books. But this is really cool, because now we get a lot, you know, uh, a lot of people, <laughs> there's a lot of people who complain about Marvel for lack of representation, but it looks like the representation is going to be happening in in the, uh, on Disney+, Plus because we have, there's a, there's a She-Hulk show, <laughs> uh, not She-Hulk, a, a, a Ms. Marvel show with the, the Pakistani American mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kamala Khan, and then we're also getting a She Hulk show. That's so awesome. <laughs> and then uh, Ta uh, Taliani Masani from uh, Orphan Black, she's gonna be playing uh, Jennifer Walters, and I'm sure they're gonna CG her up much like they CG up um, Mark Ruffalo as Hulk. And Mark Ruffalo is gonna show up in the She Hulk show, as well as Tim Roth, who played the Abomination in the the Incredible Hulk movie. He's gonna show up in this show as well. So, I love Tim Roth. Yeah, he's yeah. he's he's really awesome. They're um, amazing, like. Announcements. Yeah, there's it's a lot of cool content coming to mm -hmm. Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be like a steady flow. I mean, this is probably over the course of the next three years. Right, yeah. But it, this is really awesome. Uh, another one, uh, kind of this kind of like another deep cut for like the comic book heads. This, this uh, show called Moon Knight. This is this character. He's just like this archaeologist who stumbled upon this freaking this relic, and he freaking becomes the Moon Knight. And mm -hmm. but depending on which version of the Moon Knight they go, he he has like split personalities. Uh -huh. There's one crazy comic writer like gave him like the, like these all these different personalities, mm -hmm. so I don't know if they're going with that. But uh, another cool representation show, like in my opinion, another good is a show called Ironheart. Because a few uh, a couple years ago, uh, one of my favorite writers, Brian, Brian Michael Bendis, was working on Iron Man, and he kind of killed Iron Man for a little while, mm -hmm. and then he replaced Iron Man with this 15 year old girl. She was an MIT student, and she created her own Iron Man armor on her own. Oh. Like just in in her freaking you know in her dorm room, mm -hmm. she made her own version of the Iron Man armor, and then wow. actually it was right before Tony Hawk had died. He found her, or either oh. Tony Hawk or Tony Hawk's AI found her, and like, oh no, you are very smart. We need to give you Stark Industries resources, and then she made an, a a more upgraded version of, right. and she was the you know, Iron Man for a little Iron Woman, fifteen, fifteen year old girl, and an, an awesome. She made her own Iron Man outfit, mm -hmm. and then AI Tony Stark was like her. The, the AI of her armor for a little while was an AI of Tony Stark because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Tony Stark was dead in in the so comic book. This, this is gonna be a live action show. Who's the um, actress? Actress, uh, I didn't catch the name. I don't know who she is, uh, but yeah, it's gonna be a young black African. Yeah, she's black, African American late girl. Uh -huh. Who? Uh, that's the other thing. I right. think I might have <laughs> skipped over that the young black girl who was uh -huh. smart enough to forget. And so the show is called Ironheart. And after Iron Man comes back, she's not Iron Man, so she took on the name Ironheart. So they're making an Ironheart show. Like, I never thought in a million years <laughs> yeah. this would happen. It was, it was such a cool story that, that Brian Michael Bendis wrote however many, like a couple of years ago. It was like a really great run on the Invincible Iron Man. Awesome. It was funny because at the same time, like, Doctor Doom became Iron Man as well. <laughs> Like, oh, Tony Stark is dead. I will be t Iron Man. I will be Iron Man. So we had like two Iron Men running around. One uh, Riri Williams, and then you had friggin' Victor Von Doom as the other, the the infamous Iron Man. Now the the show. Okay, now the one big surprise that really surprised me out of all the Marvel announcements, because you know we knew about all the, a lot of this other stuff. Uh, there's gonna be a show called Secret Invasion. Uh, again, like this is semi deep cut, but uh, this is what uh, Pete and I had felt like Marvel had, w was gonna build to. For the movies, but I guess they decided to shift this and make it a a TV show. So, secret. This is a show that's going to be starring Samuel Jackson's Nick Fury, and and then all the all the characters that are at the end of the uh, the uh, the Captain Marvel movie, all the all those um, the shape shifting scrolls. Because mm -hmm. originally, in the comic book, uh, Secret and Invasion was over the course of several years. These mm -hmm. shape shifting scrolls mm -hmm. they replaced a bunch of heroes without anyone knowing. Mm -hmm. And then they all like, and then suddenly like they, they found, oh, like let's say Elektra, uh, the uh, Daredevil's uh, enemy. Like one day the Avengers were fighting her and she got killed mm -hmm. and then she turned into an alien and everyone's like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. Elektra's a scroll? And then like you, you start finding out, oh, 
they've replaced people left and right without anyone knowing for years yeah. and insult and inserting them. But what's weird, because in the comic book, the scrolls were the bad guy. But right now, after the events of Captain Marvel, see right now, Ryan Tonka just brought up this point right now. I find it strange the scrolls are the good at this moment. Yeah, it's kind of weird. So I don't know how, I don't know if there's going to be a bad faction of scrolls who are invading the Marvel Universe and Nick Fury and his good scrolls have to go, go you know, find them and, 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 and get them out of wherever they've replaced people. So they're doing a whole show on this. So instead of some strange movie, which people will be confused, there's going to be a strange show where nerds will be, well, non-nerds will be confused and nerds like me will be like, yes, this should be interesting. That, that, that was the, like, when I, when I saw the logo from the Secret Invasion and all these announcements, I was like, what? And then like, Samuel Jackson getting his own show? Yes. Because mm -hmm. anytime we get more of Sam Jackson's Nick Fury, it just yeah. makes me happy. Like, totally. like I, it just, he, he is just a charismatic, crazy person. And the, the other, the, I think the, the, the fun thing they got announced as far as the Marvel side is, is there's going to be a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and apparently this is going to be akin to the, uh, as far as James Gunn is concerned, uh, he, he, he was referencing the Star Wars holiday special of 1978 or 1979, this terrible CBS produced thing, which like B. Arthur was singing, uh, Chewie had a family, uh, it was bad. No, it was just like, it, it's, it's notoriously horrible. It's like the ugly sweater. Oh. It, uh, of Star Wars for the longest time up until the prequels or in some people the some people might think the sequels uh, that was like the friggin it was actually the first time you ever saw Boba Fett he was just kind of hanging out in the background because mm -hmm. this move this this special had come out before Empire Strikes Back mm -hmm. like Luke was in it for like five seconds Harrison Ford's like fuck this noise uh, uh, Princess Leia was like I don't think I think she she, she might have been drunk <laughs> because uh, she like everyone had musical numbers. Oh, it was why? like it was produced by CBS. It had nothing to do with like Lucas. It was just like oh it was like because you know in the late seventies you know it yeah. was all variety shows. So they made a Star Wars variety show holiday special. And, like Chewie had a family and <laughs> he had a wife and kids, and I forgot, I think one of, they had ridiculous names too. It was. I have never seen it. I've only heard stories of it. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. Yeah. Like, there's a really bad version of it on oh, YouTube. I'm, uh, the Star Wars Holiday Special. It's really bad. They, they celebrate Life Day. Which is funny, because recently on, on Disney+, Plus, they had a Star War, a Lego Star Wars Holiday Special. Oh, which, I, I guess, was poking fun at that. They, they, they brought back Life Day for the current set of characters. <laughs> But uh, I think they 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 they, they, they stuck the landing from what my understanding. It was a lot more fun, and of course they made fun of. I, I forget what the Chewie's wife's name. It was really bad, and Chewie's son's name. They were just like, it was bad. Yeah. I don't know who wrote it. It was like I don't, I don't know. Chewie's son's name. You're you're looking it up over there. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm like looking, but it doesn't have that. No, just like look up Star Wars Holiday Special, like 1978. Yeah, no, I did. It's oh. on Wikipedia. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> We're in bed, Pat Ross, and Bruce, Bruce Valanche. Bruce Valanche. See, there you go. That's one of the reasons why it was really freaking uh, uh, kitschy, because you had freaking you had Bruce Valanche, who was like the king of variety shows. He was like a big writer back in the 70s. It was just bad, but uh, apparently James Gunn is going to do a Guardians of the Galaxy. I guess it's going to be like 2021 or 2022. <laughs> uh, Ryan Tanaka here tells us that Star-Lord is officially bisexual according to Marvel. I'm like, okay, good on him. Star-Lord. Star-Lord? Star-Lord. Oh, yeah. Here, maybe he's bi. Apparently he's bi. According to Marvel. I don't know if that's in the comic book or if it's in the movies, but... <laughs> It's gonna be a real awkward three-way of like Thor, uh, Gamora, and and and, and Star Lord. <laughs> Maybe that's why Star Lord is so like intimidated by Thor because he just thinks he's so damn handsome. <laughs> I mean, I would too. <laughs> so walking around, walking around those, walking around that six-pack. Come on, man. Especially like Fat Thor. <laughs> fat Thor, oh yeah, Fat Thor was cool. <laughs> Forget <laughs> Thor Lebowski, the big Thor Lebowski. All right, and. So, so there was other Disney stuff that was announced. I I, I couldn't write it. I, I was running out of time. I was trying to write everything down as fast as I could. So I wrote down a couple of things. So there's there a Pixar, this Pixar movie that was originally was supposed to come out in theaters. Oh, they just announced it? Oh, okay, maybe it was in the comic books. <laughs> um, 
there's a Pixar movie called Soul, which I, I had seen the trailer before, and it, it, it seems like it's another one of those, oh, I'm going to cry a lot during this movie. Like, the, there's this jazz artist, like, he, he's on his way to, like, hit, hit, to the audition that's going to make his career, and he falls down a manhole and he dies. <laughs> but he winds up in purgatory, and he's trying to find his way back to see if he can bring back, come back to life. Oh, yeah, yeah yes, there's, there's an I Am Groot, there's a Groot cartoon as well coming out. I forgot to write that one down. So, yeah, there's this really interesting, yeah, this, this Pixar movie, which originally was going to be, you know, I guess it, I think it would have been, like, this Christmas's Pixar movie. But clearly we ain't getting that. <laughs> there's no Disney movies in theaters right now. We, oh, so, Soul is going to be coming out on Disney Plus at some point in the next few months. Soul? S-O-U-L. Soul. Yeah. Uh, of course, a, a black guy we represented as a ghost. Oh, what's it? Soul. Yeah, there you go. Noob. Hey. Where'd you get that? From your mom? <laughs> your mom who's always yes. eating Happy Meal? Your mom always eating Happy Meals? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Here's, here's a noob from Soul. There you go. Uh, see, it, see, it was supposed to come out because, see, there was Happy Meal toys yeah. for it that yeah. <laughs> I guess your mom gave you Happy Meal toy from Soul. That picks yeah. our Soul. Yeah, that's the only consensus. Soul's going to be a cry fest. I, I, I can't imagine. I am I, I'm not going to okay. make it. It's coming back. It's, it's going to be on Christmas Day on, uh, on Disney+. Plus. Oh, boy. I can't wait. Uh, we're going to spend Christmas crying. And Tiger is going to be looking at us going, why are you guys crying so much? <laughs> yeah. It's coming out December 25th. I love it if he's just raspberry, though, because he's crying. That would be hilarious. Just He sees us all, and he's like, Pfft. he's like, I call BS on this, parents. <laughs> You're not supposed to be crying. I'm the one that cries. The baby cries, not you guys. So, and of course, in, in the tradition of what Disney has been doing a lot of lately, they announced they're going to do a bunch more taking old uh, animated films and turning them into live action. So they're going to do a uh, friggin' Pinocchio live action. Yeah, McDonald's delayed their Happy Meal toys this month to promote it. Oh, okay. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Adelaide knows all about it then. You're, you're on top of it. See, obviously, I am... I, I, don't really have time between work and baby. I I have not had a lot of time to research other things. <laughs> I just desperately researched this the other day and just before the show. So there's a Pinocchio live action movie which seems really disturbing. I <laughs> there I, I feel like there's a lot of like, we we've talked about this before on the show and I remember me and Pete went on for for a long tangent about this where I was like just making fun like, yeah let's just bring back freaking all this let's just make a live action of this let's make a live action of that why not live action Black Cauldron live action Rescuers Down Under hey why not no they're apparently no they're just gonna do it they are there's a Pinocchio and there's a Peter Pan and Wendy live action and then what we were just discussing right before I went live on the air I, I didn't realize that. They're going to do a, a Chippendales Rescue Rangers mm -hmm. live action slash animated film where I'm just like, okay, but then I, I, it's being directed by one of the guys from the Lonely Island. Not awesome. So that gave me hope. And then Andy, Andy Samberg and uh, John Mulaney are going to be Chippendale. I don't know mm -hmm. which one's going to be which. I, I guess I'd have to assume uh, that, let's see, yeah, I'm trying to think. Hmm. I think, because uh, I think Chip will be John Mulaney. And then Dale will be Andy Samberg. Because Andy Samberg can be like dumb and weird like Dale is. Dale, Mr. Hawaiian shirt, Magnum P.I. You know, you want to know how many years old I was when I finally realized like, oh, Chip is dressed up like freaking Indiana Jones. And Dale's dressed up like Magnum P.I. <laughs> I didn't realize that as a kid. <laughs> I was an adult and I was like, oh, I'm so dumb. Oh, I'm getting too loud. I'm getting too loud. I'm getting excited. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about some Disney afternoon stuff. So like that gets my blood pumping. 90s, you know, I'm all about the, my Disney afternoon. Because yeah. I know in the in the DuckTales cartoon, they established Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers as canon when, when they showed, a, uh, what do you call it, I think one of the scientists was experimenting on a mouse and made her super smart mm -hmm. gadget. <laughs> <laughs> Which, it, it's, the other day, I, 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 I was watching some Disney Plus with Ty on my phone, and I realized, oh, the whole DuckTales cartoon Oh, uh, you know, I wonder who the voice is. Is going to be Monterey Jack? I, I know that they said Seth Rogen is going to be a, 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 a do a cameo, so I guess he's not going to do any main voices. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's going to be Fat Cat. <laughs> Maybe Seth Rogen will be Fat Cat. Oh uh, yeah, who could be Monterey Jack? I don't know. I'm trying to think. So, like, someone's going to do a, a really bad. Uh, 
Australian accent. I'm Monterey Jack. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm sure they'll get either like Kate McCucci or Ricky Lindholm to be a uh, gadget. <laughs> I think one of those two would be perfect for <laughs> for gadget. <laughs> Although Kate McCucci's already um, Webigale on. <laughs> I think he's on Webigale. Yeah. I'm no joke. I actually had thought like, what a cute girl's name. Mm -hmm. Webigale. Webigale. Okay, really like if we had a girl, yeah, it, 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 it would they would go Webigale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the new DuckTales? Because Kate McCucci is the voice of Webigale. Okay. And a bunch of your SNL guys are the freaking, are the, are Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Yeah, right. No, I haven't seen anything. I guess. The closest I get to SNL is an animation. Is, is Nature, Nature Cat. Cat. <laughs> which Nature Cat, apparently on PBS, is freaking just love. the home of a, like, it's, 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 it's the extra work for SNL people. Like, Taryn Killen is the freaking voice of Nature Cat. And then, mm -hmm. uh, Kate, Kate McKinnon is a regular voice. Mm -hmm. And Keenan Thompson. And I wouldn't be surprised if, like. Squeaks. She squeaks. She squeaks. Oh, so. I wouldn't be surprised if other yeah. SNL or former SNL people are like oh, guest yeah. voices all the time on that show. I'm sure during that Christmas special, I'm sure there was a bunch of. I don't know who Hal is though. Like, he's like, Hal? Hal is so cute. <laughs> it was like one day, like, so like you just you had it on, and then like I heard that one cat. I'm like, that sounds like Keenan Thompson doing one of his ridiculous voices. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. And it was Keenan Thompson. I'm like, it's just a bunch of SNL people. Yeah. So uh, I imagine that the, this Chip and yeah, yeah, Chip and Dale, all these shows are just getting all these. They, they 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 all have their recording setups at home now. They can they can ADR and send it send it via the internet. Yeah, I uh, who will be Monterey Jack? I'm sure it's going to be some ridiculous comedian That's doing. Ducktales reboot. Yeah, there's a current. Jack Bennett. Jack Bennett is. Jack Bennett. Who's that? He plays. Um, the, uh, um, oh, in the current DuckTales reboot? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. I wonder if they'll use that voice. Well, maybe and maybe not. They already introduced the rest of the Rescue Rangers in the DuckTales reboot? Dang it. I I'm so behind. That's why I... I, I Disney Wiki. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm so... Because I, I discovered that all the DuckTales episodes are on Disney Plus, right? All the current DuckTales episodes are on Disney Plus. So I'm like, I gotta watch that. And I'm like, the last thing I saw, I watched like the Darkwing Duck episodes on YouTube before Disney Plus was a thing. Uh, the, the, in, in, in this DuckTales show, they, they, Darkwing Duck was a TV show. <laughs> and then they found the real Darkwing Duck. Apparently it was the real Darkwing Duck who was like, <laughs> it was so crazy. <laughs> and then, and, oh, and then Gizmo Duck is freaking uh, Alexander Hamilton. It's freaking Lin-Manuel Miranda. Really? They, they made him a, a freaking Puerto Rican duck. Oh my God. Yeah, Lin-Manuel is, is, is Gizmo Duck. Oh my God. That's freaking awesome. Benson Crackshaw. Benson Crackshaw. They made they made him a Puerto Rican. <laughs> and his mom and then his mom's like a freaking uh, a Puerto Rican duck cop. <laughs> Amazing. Benson Crackshaw Cabrera. I think yeah. There was a whole episode of the podcast we had a few years ago where like oh Darkwing Duck's Hispanic. What? <laughs> uh, not Darkwing Duck. Uh, a Gizmo Duck is, is Hispanic. Mm -hmm. This is Lin Manuel Miranda. Mama. <laughs> That's so cool. It was such a. It's a yeah. Yeah, this is before I even knew the whole uh, the Hamilton thing. I just knew yeah. him as the as the guy who co-wrote a bunch of stuff on Moana. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you could tell. Yeah, totally. yeah. <laughs> you're you're looking at the uh -huh. Fenting Quack Shell. Yeah, she's magic of the spell. Magic of the spell? Mm -hmm. Oh, she's one of the bad guys. I she's. Know, I think I'm oh, it was, oh so, someone's already playing her on the show. Yeah, I don't know who. The wife is on the Disney Wiki right now. Like, we have to sit down and watch the the the, the, the Ducktales reboot. Then you're gonna yeah. you're gonna love it because there's like, yeah, you're you're gonna really enjoy it. Yeah, because uh, what was it? Ah, the what's his face? Because like he, uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. One of them is like an SNL former SNL guy, mm -hmm. and the other uh, I think the red hat one is freaking Danny Pudi from Community. One of them is John Raffio from freaking Park and Rec. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, yeah. What, I forget the SNL guy's name. He, he, he was the guy that, oh, like, in freaking Rick and Morty, they always make fun of him. Like, he's going to be on SNL the rest of his life. Catherine Tate. Catherine Tate. Oh, freaking, um, she's from Doctor Who. Oh, or, mm -hmm. yeah. She's from Doctor Who. She was, in, she was on The Office. She was, mm -hmm. like, the British lady on The yeah, Office. Yeah, mm -hmm. Catherine Tate. Mm -hmm. Bobby Moynihan. Thank you. Bobby Moynihan is one of, is Louis. Oh. On, 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 uh, Bobby on. Moynihan. Bobby Moynihan's, uh, yeah, Bobby Moynihan is, is yeah. oh, you, you don't like, oh, Ryan doesn't like the new animation style. I, I think it's interesting. 
No, there's a funny sequence in the show where like they, um, they give uh, Donald Duck a little pill to fix his voice, and it's Don Cheadle. <laughs> <laughs> he temporarily has a normal voice, and it's freaking Don Cheadle. What were we talking about? The, the, the other one that changed the other day? What were we talking about? Oh, what? Uh -huh. Oh, freaking, uh, what, um, Stefan? Stefan. Yeah, Stefan. <laughs> yeah, well, I, we had, I, I knew Doctor, uh, do, no, freaking Doctor Who is freaking, uh, Uncle Scrooge. It's freaking, uh, David Tennant. Yeah. Which is very appropriate. He's Doctor, uh, uh, he's Scottish and so is, uh, Uncle Scrooge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he speaks with the, there's a DuckTales wiki, that's awesome. Oh, hell yeah, there's a yeah. wiki, yeah. DuckTales wiki? Yeah. DuckTales is awesome. And then, yeah, this 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 new DuckTales show has been, I, I, remember, I watched all of season one. Oh, hey, Daniel Wong, you just got in. <laughs> it, it's okay, I'm sure you, you'll, you'll jump in the DeLorean and go watch this from the beginning, Daniel. <laughs> uh, uh, I know our, our two, two of our three patrons are, all, you guys will be on no matter what, and I, I appreciate that. <laughs> No matter how late <laughs> you, you'll be on, uh, yeah. So yeah, we, we talked all all the crazy oh, Disney. So many. Yeah, the, the, that Ducktales reboot is so cool. We're gonna have to sit and watch it. Uh, you, you, me, and then you, 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 me, and the little guy. We're gonna have to, yeah. you're gonna have to watch it because it, it's it's really it's really cute and funny. They they find Huey and Dewey, Huey, Dewey, and Louie's mom. They, they, that's like the the whole like arc of the first season. Like, yeah. oh, like they find a picture. Like, hey, that's our mom. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, you get to find out. <laughs> you find out about her, like, uh, oh, she she she's a legend of some sorts. She's an adventurer. It, it's a it's a cool it, it's a really cool show. I I remember I was concerned. I'm like, oh, they're rebooting Ducktales. Oh man, it better not suck. And then, like, I saw the voice actors. I'm like, oh, okay, this this can be this can be cool. This can be cool. And I watched them. Like, All right, it's pretty awesome. There's like so many homages to like the entire Disney afternoon throughout the entire throughout the entire show like mm -hmm. I think they even reference the gummy bears they reference everything <laughs> everything is referenced cool. Cool you, you hear about freaking like oh freaking the duck you, you hear about the the tailspin city oh St. Canard you hear about for, oh oh no wait no that's Cape Suzette Cape Suzette is freaking DuckTales St. Canard is Darkwing Duck yeah and yeah it's, <laughs> I like the Darkwing Duck Darkwing Duck had one of the best themes mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but the one I have memorized for the rest of my life to my dying day will be the Chippendales Rescue Rangers one. <laughs> That's the one. Sometimes some crimes go slipping through the cracks, but these two gum shoes <laughs> are picking up the slack. There's no case too big, no case too small. <laughs> and then something. Oh, see, I don't. I guess I don't have it 100 percent memorized. Oh, oh, okay. It was like. You just call ch ch ch, -ch Bandale, Rescue Rangers. I don't know. I never, I, I do not remember it for the life of me. <laughs> when, I was, when I was playing the, the, I have that Disney Afternoon game on my PS4. <laughs> it's like it has like the little chiptune versions of all those. Doo -doo, like, <laughs> I was playing them for Tiger the other morning while you were asleep. It was so funny. Like, doo doo, doo doo. <laughs> the little chiptune. Doo 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 doo. Even like the, the the tailspin, I was, I was trying to play tailspin, but Tiger kept like smacking the control out of my hand. Uh, do you remember the show Out of This World? Uh, uh, out, of this world. Yeah, out of This World. It sounds familiar. Is that the one where the girl could stop time by putting her fingers mm -hmm. together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that. Yeah, I think that. Yeah. I like that. I like that song. That song I always, <clears throat> always remember. Well, her dad was an alien, right? And he would talk to her through like a little like triangle on it. Oh, was that Burt Reynolds doing yeah. the voice? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, and the, and the opening was, Would you like to swing on a sky? Oh, right. That... that was like my favorite freaking theme song. That was a fun show. Oh my god. Yeah. I remember, oh, mm -hmm. I, I, I had I forgotten like what it was called. I see, that, I was about to say, like, I was, I just remember, oh, like, I'm like, well, there's one with the robot, and there's one with the, the girl who could stop time with her fingers. Small wonder, yeah. Small wonder. That one was... Because Small wonder was a little robot. Mm -hmm. Those weird, like, mid-afternoon programs that were, like, targeted at kids at, like, 4 or 5 o'clock or whatever, right? Totally. <laughs> it was cool. It was all about robots and gadgets and, like, space mm -hmm. conversation. 
That's all wacky stuff. I feel like that stuff would come on like. There's a lot more about a lot more. Well, shit. I guess because there's so many more new channels. Yeah, there's a lot more avenues right now. There's a lot more different ways. There's a lot more accessibility via streaming via. Uh, via the internet, uh, yeah, 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 via the internet. TV, cable. Mm -hmm. I mean, and now I mean, right. there's a whole you know, like like it's a tool that we use. That there's a whole PBS Kids channel that just plays all day long, mm -hmm. and it, it, it and Ty is like totally into it. He 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 loves Molly Denali. He loves Sesame Street. If I just sing the Molly Denali song, he, he smiles. Happy and yeah, dancing. yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he loves this show, Molly Denali. All he, all he has to hear hear the song, and he's like. Mm -hmm. <gasps> It's, it's he just, loves it when he sees like Princess's face on mm -hmm. the TV. Mm -hmm. He's all happy. So sweet. You, you, my, our son's gonna marry an Alaskan girl. <laughs> He's gonna marry a girl with a tattoo on her face. Yeah. <laughs> Millennials. Millennials. It's okay. It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> it's adorable. <laughs> my son's gonna fall in love with a Alaskan woman. <laughs> He's gonna move up to Alaska. Beautiful. Yeah, the new Sesame Street intro is totally dope. I feel like I need to like take an edible and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it's so crazy. It the, yeah, the new one is like yeah, mm -hmm. I, I I caught it mm -hmm. one of these past weekends, mm -hmm. and I was like, what? What is? I think I turned you like, what is this intro? This is awesome. I don't remember the intro being this cool when I was a kid. It wasn't. It was not. <laughs> it's like totally like if the parents are doing we are smoking weed or doing edibles, mm -hmm. this is your jam, parents. Oh, watch Sesame Street, kids. Whoa, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Yeah, Ty's all about Elmo. Like, yeah, we we we, I, we specifically bought a training toothbrush for him with Elmo on it <laughs> because he likes Elmo. Because he loves, yeah. For, he loves. for Christmas, he's getting a tickle me Elmo. Uh -huh. It's a hug me Elmo. Oh, it's a hug me Elmo. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know. Time delayed edible. Yes. <laughs> I don't know how to <laughs> yeah, the, the hug me Elmo. I don't know. He he's. He's either gonna love it or continually throw it out of the crib. <laughs> and that thing is gonna thump, thud. It's gonna thud. Because there is a machine inside, inside of it. That. And it's gonna go like, ah, 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 ah. crawl on the floor on its own. Oh, it's gonna wake us up at 5 a.m. scary. Have we seen the peekaboo Elmo? No, I have not. Oh my gosh. Peekaboo Elmo? Oh my god, man. We have hug. <laughs> oh, uh, Ryan, Ryan's son loves peekaboo Elmo, apparently. <laughs> Oh, right. Oh, oh my God! Ro Ro Rosa. Oh, oh, how cute! I don't, I'm sure you guys could hear that, but. <laughs> but it's cute because it's a blanket and it goes like that. Oh really? Oh my gosh! Because well, he like he, you do. Like, like, like I do. do yeah. Like we we do we do a tiger all the time. We we we, we I'll I'll grab a shirt and just go peekaboo, or I'll I'll grab a blanket and be like I'll hide behind the blanket and I'll I'll pop my head up the top and go peekaboo and Ty just. Okay. Thinks it's the funniest thing ever. I need to tell my mom we need a fucking hug Elmo recall. <gasps> There's a hug Elmo recall? Oh, I guess maybe Ty's not gonna get it for Christmas. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I guess Ty's not getting his, his hug me Elmo for Christmas. Sorry, son. <laughs> There's a recall on the hug me Elmo. What is it doing? Choking children? No, no, I don't know, I don't know. I'm like, wait, wait, I saw a hug Elmo recall, but. <laughs> Dangle Wong, he warned his girls, if I see dolls walking around in the dark, I'm putting them out the window. <laughs> oh, punting them. <laughs> no Annabelle's around here. I've seen that I've seen that movie. I've seen The Conjuring. I've seen Annabelle. Nah. <laughs> nah. I am with you 100% there, Daniel. <laughs> If I if if, if, I, if I saw an Annabelle doll just like it, it, it's sitting one place, I turn around and it's somewhere else. Nah. It's out. It's nah. going in a furnace. Nah. It's going. <laughs> it's going in a furnace. I got it. I threw it on the floor. <laughs> so I don't know. Did you ever, did you see ever any of those movies, The Conjuring or Annabelle? No, because yeah, I was scary. Yeah, it's I I saw Annabelle. It's such a big chicken. It's weird. The, the, those movies, I usually would just watch them because I'd get passes. <laughs> I like, I like dolls, and I want to keep them as happy memories. Okay, then I'm not going to tell you anything about this Annabelle movie. It's just like... No, no, don't. They kept trying to throw it away, and it'd be like right back where it was supposed to be. It's like, no, what? I think I did see Annabelle in, during the daytime. Oh, my God. I can only watch scary movies during the day. Uh, and then, like, over... Oh, Ryan. Ryan has seen them all. Like... <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, the, the, the conjuring, the conjuring messed me up. I, 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 saw, I saw the conjuring purely because it was, uh, uh, the, the, the woman I was, I was dating at the time wanted to see it. And I was like, uh, I guess so. Oh. Did you close your eyes? Did you peek with one eye? Yeah, but you know what's weird? Like the Conjuring wasn't like it wasn't horrifying. Oh, like, I think what bothered me the most about the Conjuring is that these are real people that go out there and try to like they, they find the supernatural. It wasn't like oh. it wasn't like freaking Hellraiser or like mm. see like those movies. I can like watch those because I'm like ah this is ridiculous. <laughs> like Nightmare on Elm Street. Like I was a kid that yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street scared me, but like as an adult, I just laugh at it. I like brother. child's play. Oh, they used to bother me. I'm like. Freaking bread dwarfs. <laughs> Good guy. But like through those ridiculous movies, I, I can laugh through them now. But these Conjuring and like Annabelle movies, like they mess me up because based on the true story. Yeah, Ryan Tucker just said you can visit the real Annabelle. I'm like, nope, oh, yeah. I don't ever want to visit the real Annabelle. Nah, oh. nah. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, 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 because it was it the, 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 this couple that the Conjuring one and two are based on. It's like uh, Ed and Leslie Warren. They're like paranormal investigators. They're yeah. they're a real couple who go out and seek yeah. freaking yeah. paranormal activity, and it's like based on a true story. Yeah. So yeah, well, what well, the thing I liked about the these uh, Conjuring Annabelle movies, like they well, I can't, maybe not so much Conjuring the the Annabelle movie. They made sure you never saw the doll move. It would always be moving, but you never saw it like, like it would always be like, you, they'd leave the room, it'd be somewhere else. You never saw it like <laughs> animatronic. It'd be like, what the fuck? It's like, the, like they, they, the, 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 the dad takes the doll and like puts it in the in the dumpster like five miles away and they, they like the next morning it's like, it's back. It's just back in the house like, why is it still here? It's, it's like, um, yeah, yeah, it's all in the same universe. Uh, Conjuring 1, 2, Annabelle, yeah, same universe. What is it called? Uh, Elf on the Shelf? Elf on the Shelf, yeah. It's like the, the extreme version of Elf on the Shelf. Mm -hmm. oh. We are not doing Elf on the Shelf to Portai. No, 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 no. No, that nonsense. Mm -hmm. only, only if we want to torment the Elf on the Shelf. All right, Ty, what do you want to do to the Elf, Elf on the Shelf today? <laughs> They made it all universe with La Llorona and the nun. What? What, did the Warren show up to try to figure out La Llorona? Ugh. La Llorona used to scare me as a child. <laughs> I think my mom would tell me that story just to scare me. Interesting, yeah. Ah. Like, it's based on a true story. <gasps> I guess they're, they're trying to create their own MCU. Like, horror CU. <laughs> a horror cinematic universe. For, for a second, that's how tired my brain is. I'm like, what's the C and MCU stand for? That's how exhausted. Like, like me and my this cartoon is cinematic. I was like, what? This is how this is how me and Bob are at work. You know, like we're like we're like cracking like jokes on each other, and then like being bad at math. We're like, forty eight plus twelve. That's sixty, right? Do we need your calculators out? I'm like, no, we're adults. We should be able to do this. <laughs> like, it's 60. I'm, I'm certain of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it started with Insidious. Oh, my God. It's all one universe? How terrifying. <laughs> what a rabbit hole to fall into. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, I, uh, Conjuring was fine. I, I think I saw parts of Conjuring 2. Conjuring 2 felt like it was a little more ridiculous. It was less based in realism. Although there, there, there are certain things in Conjuring 1 where I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> just a hand come, just a pair of hands comes out of the closet and goes. Ew. Yeah, it's just a pair of hands. Just You don't know where those hands came from. It's just this closet. All of a sudden, it's just like. <laughs> Send a shiver down my spine. Yeah. Naturally, it scared the daylights out of the woman I was, I, I went to go see, <laughs> see it with. Mm -hmm. but. <laughs> I guess she just, I don't know, maybe she's one of the, she was one of those women that likes to be scared. Yeah. She's like, you might not get your arm back. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like, ah, my arm's broken. Orphan has an iron heart. 
Oh, you looked up Ironheart? Mm -hmm. Riri Williams. Dominic Thorne. Dominique Thorne. I wonder what else she's been in. She, uh, I'm sure she's... 2018, if Beale Street could talk. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's actually a movie that... Of some renown. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wonder... Uh, and then, oh yeah, I forgot to write down, there's going to be an Armor War show starring with Don Cheadle's character. Uh, going after all the people trying to steal Star Trek. Uh, all yeah. kinds of... There's a lot of stuff coming out. If you if you are this is it's a great time to be a nerd mm -hmm. right now. If you enjoy Marvel and Star Wars or just Disney in general, mm -hmm. that whole they're 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 making that Disney Plus subscription worth it. Uh, I can't wait to start watching WandaVision next month. I'm like I'm really excited for that because I want to see how in the hell <laughs> I'll bring back Justin ha Justin Hammer. He's one of the only villains who didn't get killed at the end of the Marvel movie. <laughs> Him and um. And, uh, and uh, Zemo, <laughs> Daniel Brühl, who's going to be the bad guy in uh, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. They, they, there's only like t like two instances where they didn't kill the bad guy. <laughs> in like almost every Marvel movie, they kill the bad guy. Well, I guess Loki was the other one, but <laughs> but Justin Hammer, like I, I would love it if uh, if Justin Hammer shows up in that Armor War show. That because Sam Rockwell is freaking awesome. I love him in everything he does. He's just. A crazy person. <laughs> he was one of the bright spots of Iron Man Two. <laughs> I, I I would love just I would love Sam Rockwell to get another crack at the current Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, that the, the MCU back then early on it was still kind of in its gestational period. Period. Uh, I'd love it if if, if uh, Justin Hammer can be in any good Marvel thing now, <laughs> where they let him flip. They let him be fun and awesome in that, in, the, in this current environment of, of high quality uh, Marvel things. Oh, I, the other thing I forgot to mention, uh, I guess I guess the article where I grabbed everything was just very focused on just the Disney Plus shows. Uh, Black Panther 2 was announced, and they're not going to recast um, Black uh, T'Challa. I guess they're just going to have T'Challa pass away in, in some way and then see how Wakanda deals with T'Challa no longer being around in this second Black Panther movie. I don't know uh, what they're gonna do, but they're gonna they're gonna do something. And then they announced a third Ant Man, and oh, I guess a a third in the Ant Man trilogy. It was a uh, Quantum Mania. I know this with X Men sisters were uh, uh, Mary, Kate. Mary Kate. Yeah, <laughs> trip me out too uh, <laughs> when I learned that. And I was like, oh, it makes sense. Oh. Huh. Duh, but no, but no, her face, yeah, like her facial features. I'm like, oh, okay. She sort of, like, you can kind of see it a little bit after. Uh, although it's funny, like the the the, the, the weird thing is that because they were, you know, they first showed up, uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver first mm -hmm. showed up in uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron, mm -hmm. and then, I don't know if it was like that same year, but it was like they were both both the, the actor and actress. They were in this movie Godzilla, and they were a married couple. So they played brother and sister in one movie, and they were married a couple in another movie. <laughs> like. Weird. Yeah, right. yeah, Ryan. Yeah, that's a. It's a. I don't. That's the weird thing. It's like a, You know, I understand, but it's a. Uh. Uh. Um. It's a tough, big character to retire, especially you know after that. That first movie was such a big hit. It freaking like was so amazing, but it's just uh, I don't know. I I I I hate to see it. it's like oh it's like. I get it on both sides. It's like, oh, it, it sucks. I'm like, oh, we're not. I mean, there's going to be another Black Panther. I, I cause that, that's happened in the comic books where T'Challa has stepped down from being the Black Panther. Uh, there's been some complications. Um, where like Black Panther was like disgraced as the king, and so like, Shuri had to step up, and she became the the queen of Wakanda, and she was the new Black Panther. And there's been other like. Black Panthers in, in in that regard. So I don't know what's gonna. I I don't know if they're gonna go pull the trigger on that. Although the the the, the Shuri in in the current Black Panther, she she seems a little young uh, for for that role, especially after she just had her own little social media kerfuffle last week or the week before. Social media is hard if you're not careful. If you're famous, you you tweet out the wrong thing. Life will come at you fast, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that's a, that's a that, yeah, that, yeah. It's it's gonna be complicated. What happens with 
in Black Panther 2. I think they, they confirmed that the, the, the director and writer, Ryan Coogler, is going to come back for it. But it, it's it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I, I, I would imagine by the end of the movie, there's going to be... Yeah, yeah, bro, look at Nate Robinson. Life comes at, life comes at you fast. <laughs> Poor guy got memed to death. <laughs> and then that, that dude who knocked him out is going to go get, get, get decked by Floyd Mayweather. So whatever... I forgot if he's going to fight Floyd Mayweather or Conor McGregor. He, he wants to go fight one of those guys and get himself decked. Life comes at you fast, bro. <laughs> so I, I would imagine by the end of the Black Panther 2 movie, there's going to be another, a different Black Panther. Not T'Challa, but a different Black Panther. Whether it be Shuri or someone else. Uh, another. If, if they bring Michael B. Jordan's character, Killmonger, back from the dead and redeem him and make him... Golden Panther or Golden Jaguar, Black Panther. I don't know. I'm not paid to make those decisions. I I, I, I sit here and I watch them and I try to enjoy all this media. This we have this this bounty of of media that we that we live in. This as a kid, I mean, we had a a terrible Spider-Man movie where he threw rope from his arms. We had a weird Captain America with a with a motorcycle helmet. And uh, Lou Ferrigno was our Hulk in a and a weird Thor who was just wearing uh, friggin' fur. <laughs> so uh, we, 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 have a, we have a bounty of a, uh, I, I said it back in, in 2013, you go back deep into my Instagram when the, 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 the S.H.I.E.L.D. logo was on the side of a Disney movie, uh, not a Disney movie, a, a Disney building, the studio, and I took a photo of this. Is this the golden age of nerddom? The S.H.I.E.L.D. logo was on a, in the Disney building is going to be a TV show about the Agents of Shield. We did have, you know, fair. That's fair, Daniel. We did have a decent. Well, I, I would say more than a decent Wonder Woman. I, I remember y Young Dre looked at Diane, uh, Linda Carter and go, "That's a pretty woman." <laughs> Linda Carter. I think she still is gorgeous. <laughs> or when she was, she was the, the was she the mayor in, in Super Troopers? <laughs> But yeah, it's been an hour. I, it's time for me to wrap this sucker up. <laughs> I, I knew there was going to be plenty of content with this whole Disney Plus thing that happened last week. Uh, I'm sure there's other things that we could have talked about. We'll, we'll save them for next oh, time. I never told you this. You never told me. My middle name is spelled like that because of her. Really? Mm -hmm. Your middle name is spelled the way it is because of Linda Carter? How awesome. I... The things you learn. Huh. The things you learn. You can always follow. Yeah, My Twitter has been out of control. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at DreGP Podcast. <laughs> I had some tweets go freaking viral for my relative level of fame. It was pretty ridiculous. I, I think I talked about it last week. Um, I haven't had any tweets go viral in the last week, but I've been having some fun on Twitter. Uh, make sure follow me on Instagram. There's been a lot of hilarious posts of of weird video games. Please go check them out. Instagram uh, at DreGB Podcast as well. I, I put up a video on our YouTube page last week after last week's show when I sat here. I was, I was cracking away. I put it in the audio and I'm like, all right, let's compress a video and put it up on YouTube. So there's a new video. Please, 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 please go check out all of our. Our archive of videos. I, I, I took one of the old episodes of the podcast. I wasn't up to put it up there. <laughs> Hopefully I'll try to do the same after the show tonight. Um, YouTube. Uh, search for Dre's Geek Falsely Podcast. And uh, as always, if you want to be awesome like Ryan Tanaka, like Daniel Wong, like Art Solorio, we have a Patreon. Uh, uh, it's weird. This past week I've been getting emails from, I guess, some like Patreon competitor asking me, like, why, won't, why don't you switch to blah 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 and it was like they, they've been aggressively emailing me i'm like i've just been ignoring it i'm like no i have my i have my patrons i'm going to use patreon and this is this is what we're using we're, we're going to build from the ground up here we we, we have our awesome patrons I, I have to after the holidays are over i'm going to try to create some patreon content for my awesome patrons and try to inspire other people to become patrons if you want to help the show out just like ryan and daniel and art do go to patreon.com and search for Dre's Geek Philosophy Podcast. Uh, there, there's a link in, in, in all my uh, there's there's a link to it in our 
in our bio. If you go to uh, the allmylinks.com forward slash Dre's Geek Philosophy Podcast or Dre's GP Podcast, I forget how it works, but there's a link. If you're watching this on Facebook or if you're listening to this uh, on whatever podcast service you're listening to, there are links in, uh, in the show descriptions. Um, check us out. All of our all of our links are through that All My Links link. It, sh- it lists everything that we do, all the stuff. Please check it out. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. This has been Dre's Geek Philosophy Podcast. We will see you guys next week. Have a good night.